Welcome back guys to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan and today we are still exploring the Victorian high country. We're way up in the mountains and today we're going to explore a couple of Victoria's most famous four-wheel drive tracks. Here today right now, this is a track I've heard about for a really long time. We're actually at the junction right now. This is Billy Goat Bluff track. So I've got the sign right there, four-wheel drive only. I've only ever seen one photo of what this track looks like and my understanding is we're going to drive right along a ridge like serious drop-offs on both sides of it and the track is only 10 kilometers long which is only six miles but in that distance we're going to drop a thousand meters of elevation which is 3,300 feet so it's pretty serious down is the direction that I'm taking it right now and I've heard there's a couple of rock steps in it and so I'm curious to see how does the Gladiator do like I said, it has dragged the belly a few times lately because we are hanging a bit low with all of our weight. But here we go, a couple of Victoria's most iconic four-wheel drive tracks. The sun is shining. This should be a lot of fun. Billy Goat track up first. Let's get into it. Stay like that, stay right, stay right. I promise, now straighten. Yep, now just go straight like that, nice and slow.
there we have it. That is the end of Billy Goat's Bluff track. And that was really impressive. I gotta say, those views were incredible. In terms of four wheel driving, going down, not really a challenge. The Gladiator did scrape its belly on one of those washouts. Uh, and I hit a control arm on a loose rock that was sitting up. I just chose a bad line. But other than that, I mean, you're going downhill, it's not that hard. Going uphill, I think there was only one or two spots. There was one especially where everyone had spun their wheels on the backside of a washout. And obviously you wouldn't be able to see it until you were in it. And it looked like a few people had been stuck in there. Other than that though, I'm pretty sure the Jeep would just walk up it. It would just be slow and steady. I think you'd want to watch out. If you got too much wheel spin, you'd kind of bounce and maybe things would go badly. But yeah, doing really well. The Gladiator is impressive. I mean, it's point and shoot. Being an automatic, it's a lot easier to drive than my old standard uh, Wrangler. So enjoying it off-road for sure. And so now we've done Billy Goat's Bluff, one of the most iconic in the high country. I need to throw some air in the tires. Then we're going to race around and we're going to do another famous ridgeline drive here in the high country stick around coming up right now so we've just driven around a bunch of beautiful beautiful roads some way up in the alpine some down kind of at creek level and stuck to the side of mountains and we're actually back in alpine national park now we're really close to where we were hiking uh, a week ago when we hiked from one ski resort to another and now it's time to do one of the other iconic tracks of the Victorian high country. This one is called Blue Rag Range Track. And so Blue Rag, I guess for short, this is another iconic ridgeline drive. And lots of people have told me that I need to check it out. I've never been here. I've never even seen a photo of what this one looks like. So I'm pretty excited. And we're already quite high up in the Alpine. I'd say we're not too far away from tree level right now. And so I actually don't know I know the trail's only seven kilometers long. What's that, like four and a half miles or something? So I know it's not very long in distance and just looking at the start right now, it's pretty steep, but I don't know how much elevation it gains. But even as I walk up these first few steps of the track here, you can see it's, you know, a gravel road. It's nothing too crazy. It does again have these kind of washouts or uh, water bars that I think the belly of the Gladiator is going to scrape on once again. You can see it has a reasonable breakover. We'll just have to see how that goes. But you can see already, this is where we're at. So the views from up here are about to get absolutely incredible. Let's go for it. The Blue Range track in the Vic High Country. So we made it all the way to the very top and there's no doubt about it, we've discovered the Achilles heel of the Gladiator. We definitely scraped the belly more than a few times. Doesn't feel good, it's not something I like doing. So desperately need that new suspension that'll better carry the weight. And uh, I'll go outside and show you around. It is simply stunning up here, but it is intensely windy. That means I can't put the drone in the air. I'm pretty sure it would just blow away. And I don't think you're gonna hear a word that I say once I get out of the Jeep. 
So I'll show you around, but there isn't gonna be any talking. So Blue Rag Road, absolutely breathtaking. I highly recommend you come up and check this out when you're near Mount Hotham, which I can actually see right now is not even that far away. So let's check it out. All right guys, we drove just a little way down from the summit and we decided to stop here right on the side of the track and cook dinner. And our plan here was twofold. We were hoping first of all the wind would die down so we can throw the drone in the air, which so far is not working at all. But also the light is really changing. It's pretty late in the evening already, it's like 7 p.m. So with any luck, the light will be beautiful on the way down. So we've got tonight pasta. Of course, I put too much in the pot because that's one of my life skills. Uh, sausages and onion which is sticking in this pot Dan don't use that pot next time Katie's cut up a whole bunch of veggies over here that are gonna go into pasta and she also just finished making a coleslaw salad is that right Katie yeah it's like an Asian coleslaw with some red cabbage and some black sesame seeds sesame oil ginger green onions should be great sounds delicious so we're going to have dinner here and hopefully we'll probably drive down a little bit further before we stop to camp. Although if the wind totally dies down, I'd be down for camping right here. Someone else already has. There's a little fire ring right there and some firewood. So let's see. But in terms of beautiful places to cook dinner, you know, here's our kitchen. Here's our dinner on the go. And there's the view from the back of the kitchen. Pretty nice.